um, I do think it is closing though. Like, it's not a joke. I'm pretty sure what it's is shut. BlackBerry is like. Well, the thing is, they still have their like. They're gonna cut their devices. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure. Like, I know they're not making money. Their patents are only only thing keeping them afloat. There was something that. that came out. I didn't even pay attention, but there was something that came out regarding them that was positive, but I don't remember what exactly. It was it always their security was. patents that was the top end of it. Hello, Nothing. everybody. Welcome to the F Word. I am your host G, and with me it's Vass and Anthony. I'm not going to say it. The meme machine? The meme machine. Is my hair all over the place? No, you don't have much there anyway. Wow. Well, you have it like all pulled back. Yeah. No, I know. I was hoping so because I have my toque, but it keeps sliding off and then it's just, you you know. Cut it even more now? No. This is the same one that I had before Calgary. Oh. Before I went to the wedding. It just looks that because, you know what? I showered. Ah. Does that. Most of the time I, and also again, I have a hat on. Right. I hope everyone's having a great time. How are you, gents? I'm good. Doing good. I feel better. I don't feel like I'm dying, so. I feel better. Still sick, but you know. I got over it. It's a nice kind of like Anthony <laughs> phase where it's I'm always sick, but I'm still functional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Arturo is going to send me his Joker review. Oh, I just said send it. Is it spoiler free? Yeah. He's like, I actually just First finished. First thing, just full spoiler. First line. <laughs> <laughs> he dies. Arthur Fleck what? is the Joker. What? Uh, I actually just finished writing my actual review for it, he said. It's a bit long, and I still got to clean up a few things. Not sure if you want me to send it. Send it. Uh, we just... Tell me as an hour and like a half, ...started roughly. recording. Yeah. So you have... Your time starts now. ...hour and a bit. A bird. Also, a bird. I am writing this oh, as say, I am we Iron Man. are record. And he's gonna Ding. All right. Kill himself. The F Word Podcast is a proud affiliate of the Saskatchewan Podcast Network. And uh, as you all know now, Connexus Credit Union is a major sponsor. So uh, hit that hashtag money talk, y'all, or go to www.connexusmoneytalk.ca. It's the first time I didn't screw it up, or at least I didn't mess it up or fumble. A um, little bit of housekeeping. Not that much, really. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was, I had the pleasure, and I think I mentioned this last time, of being on the Story of You podcast. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, A gentleman by the name of Shane Broom had had me on there, so it was pretty much about me, and I am, not only am I not that great at being a host of a show, but I'm also terrible at talking about myself, so that was really interesting. But if you want to check it out, check out the Story story of You with a U, like the letter U. And, Any Captain uh, Marvel talk come up? Pardon? Any Captain Marvel <laughs> talk come up? Nothing. Oh, okay. Nothing. Uh, it was no. It was literally just like about me and my life. Um, and so that was pretty cool. And he was awesome. And he's got a new space, so that's awesome. And he's going to be doing a deep dive soon on Frank D'Angelo. This is the Tommy Wiseau of Canada. Hmm. So, I've heard of him. Yeah. I don't know what he's done, but it's just, super. Like, it's just as weird as Tommy Wiseau, maybe even weirder. Hmm. Like. If you thought Wazo was delusional, this guy sounds like he's even more. But people know stuff about him, like they know his origins, they know where he's gotten his money. But like he's he's got pictures online with like Al Pacino and other actors, and he's like in a band or something that's not very good. I don't know. <laughs> it's him, and we're doing it at his studio, uh, and because he's gonna Skype call one of his other buddies because he has a separate podcast specifically on Frank D'Angelo. Oh well, and so it's gonna be really cool because Shane. Sean, sorry, is like a very like open individual, and he's really good on the mic. So it'll be really fun to have. So you're going to be a part of that? Yeah, that's yeah. going to well, be that's our deep, deep, dive, deep yeah. dive. Our deep dive, but they're going to be on part yeah, of that. Yeah. Oh, wow. But we're going to be doing it off his equipment because he's got Skype set up and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's going to be sweet. And then G's going to steal it and bring it over here. Nice. Well, he's got really good sound Toit. quality. Like, So if you go to Story of You and you go to 152, mm-hmm. episode 152, that's my episode. Uh, and like his sound quality is awesome. He's got these really good mo- road mics. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, I've seen them. I wanted to get them, and I'm glad. I, I, one of the five uh, microphones that I wanted to get, and I'm glad that I got to test one out mm-hmm. really with mm-hmm. him because it turned out really good. So that was fun. That's coming out. That episode has already come out. It came out on Monday, and 
I don't know when our deep dive is going to be like towards the end of October. Mm -hmm. And then next week, we're not doing our show, regular show. I'm going to be releasing the episode I did with my friend Robert Bailey. Mm -hmm. Uh, It is titled Life in Hip Hop because we talk a lot about hip hop. And we talk a lot about, we end up getting super deep into life and it it ended up being really good. Um, He's super nervous, you can tell. And you remember Robert, he doesn't open his mouth too much. He even yeah. said that he's like, I wish I opened my mouth a little bit more. So you can kind of tell like he's got his mouth closed, but it was his first time on the mic and he did awesome. Nice. And I told him, I'm like, dude, you did so good. And I had him listen to it and he enjoyed it. So uh, it was, that's coming out next week in lieu of an episode. Cool, cool. And then me and Vass, maybe Jim. Oh, right on. Jim Demery. Because we're going to go see, me, Jim, his sister, and Soph are going tomorrow to go see the Joker, mm. or just Joker. <laughs> and then so you're seeing it on Sunday. We'll yeah. record Monday. If he's able to come, then he'll come. If not, you and I will just record it. That's cool. You're working Monday? Mm-hmm. So I'd like to get that spoiler review out. Just do spoiler. Just straight spoiler. Yeah. I want to get that out by Tuesday, so that because so then it'll be timely, and then we can do it. It's Otherwise, we'll have video, to wait right? a week. And a, nope, no, oh, no, it's going to be just a podcast. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll... I might record it, mm-hmm. but I think it's going to be long form, like my Avengers ones. Okay. But I don't think it'll be that long, though. Um, so that's what's happening. Let's get into it. Cool, cool, cool. Did I miss anything? No, nah, whatever. No. Um, <laughs> for all of you it. listening, it hasn't happened yet. It might happen, depending on how big we grow. Anthony thinks that we should start it right now. Uh, but I want you guys all to chime in for all zero of you that message. Who's going to say no? Well, okay. So every well, we have place, the mic and we can just... <laughs> <laughs> every every show yes. or every individual or whatever seems to have fans. Like mm-hmm. I think the Rocks fans are called Pebbles. I'm not sure, but for us, I think we, they're just the Rocks fans. Yeah. So we refer to them as the millions and millions of the Rocks fans. Is that yeah. what they just call it? But don't they have like a nickname? Well, I don't know. They should be WWE. The he just called them like the Rocks fans. Actually, no, I know, but I think the Pebbles would be funny. Yeah. The funniest one I've heard so far was on the Graham Norton show with uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. The Cumber Bitches. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that <laughs> or great. Chris Pine, the Pine Nuts. The Pine Nuts is good. Yeah. Um, there was a guy Tom on Nelson Spartacus, on the show Spartacus. Was, his uh, last name was Fergieli or something like that. And he called his fan base Fergies, which I thought was a little bit weird. Yeah. Um, anyways, I came to the realization, and I think you had said we've already come up with this realization. I feel like so. I feel like we have talked about this. Because I know I did it for a uh, bit, but I never actually did, like, did it. it like Never consistent. took off. Yeah. Yeah. So... For all of you fans <laughs> listening, if if we get a big fan base, you guys are the effers. So yeah, the that's going to be effers. a thing. Yeah. Right now, they're the little effers. Yeah. Yeah, little effers. Anyone who lists a, us. A little few of us. You're effers, and we love you. <laughs> but you I Brad. want you guys to be proud. Oh, look, Brad. the laptop's already freaking out. It actually, the last time when you and not you and I, the episode before that, it did cut out like a 30 second thing. Oh, that's a But shoot. luckily, it cut out well, at a not super seconds. important time. One of these times is going to happen where you're going to be listening to podcasts. Like, oh my God, what the hell is that? It's going to cut. <laughs> oh my God, I can't believe we got that on audio. <laughs> Holy shit. That was crazy. Yeah. And get in. <laughs> you know what I found out though? Um, as, as rickety as our ship is here. It works. It's like the Black Pearl. I love it to death. Mm-hmm. And hey, I it's will the go down. There's nothing wrong with the Black Pearl. No, there's nothing wrong with it. But I'm just saying, like, there's holes everywhere. Things mm-hmm. don't work properly all the time. Like, all sorts of stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. But really, at the end of the day, it's still our ship. And mm-hmm. we still have to man it. And I think, for the most part, you know what, man? It's fine. So, you laptop, you keep slowing your ass down. And for everyone, anyone who's listening, we apologize. Well, I don't think or like, not, yeah, or not. If we get sorry, funding, not sorry. <laughs> if we get funding, then we can no, upgrade whatever. some stuff. So that means we're gonna make a GoFundMe, and you guys are gonna donate all your uh, no. money to us. We're never gonna do that. We're not gonna post on Facebook for one of our birthday goals. No, nope. <laughs> PDF. We get a better laptop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is okay. We've never actually talked about this before. What? The two things that I don't think I ever want to do is, um, I don't want to flood our thing with ad- ads. Mm-hmm. Okay, I know we have the Connexus one. And that's, and that's one too much. That's just well, kidding. That, just it, kidding. It's it's a thing. The thing is this: once you get one, it's very easy. It's like, oh, I got another one, and I'll add another one. Um, but we won't do a Patreon ever. We won't do a GoFundMe. We won't be soliciting any money. If we do ever ask for money, it's because we're giving you something, and in the form of something physical, like a T-shirt, which I'm currently working on some T-shirts. I'm going to get ten of them. Mm-hmm. They're going to cost me like three hundred bucks, but they're going to turn out really nice. Because like twenty five bucks a t shirt, thirty bucks a t shirt. Yeah, um, it's quick math. 
but I don't want. All right, almost done typing it, beauty. Okay, I don't want us to be that show where we're actually worrying about it because a lot of the podcasts that I listen to now, I still enjoy them, but I skip through seven minutes because they have a bunch of ads. I feel like everyone knows you're gonna skip through the ads anyway. Like, no one yeah, as like long he, as you just have it in there. Even Rogan's Rogan has a ton of ads on his. They're actually all yeah. pretty decent. Like they're they all fit like he his. announces them like you do or there's it a click clip kind of thing. The opening of every podcast, yeah. he's got a separate clip that announces all, right. all of them, so it's pre-recorded. Then he gets into the show, right? Yeah. <laughs> and even Sean has them because he's got people that sponsor him, which yeah. is sweet and it's awesome. And you know, it would be nice, but like, I was listening to the episode and I was like, I don't know, like I just like getting right into it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And at least with this Connexus one. I can kind of throw it in wherever and just kind of roll it off. Well, just like you don't, it's not like scripted. You can just like have full control over it. So it's just yeah. more natural and just less robotic. The first seven they gave us were, but I, I tried to read them like a bit of a dick. Yes. <laughs> so, not a bit. Yeah, no, yeah. it was very apparent. Was no dick. one like, it was like, <laughs> wait, what? You did? <laughs> so, no, I was just a add a little dick. spice. You know why? Because I like the fact that we don't take ourselves seriously anymore. I mean, I don't think we ever did. I think we pretended to, and that made us come across as dicks. And the one thing I always tell people, if I would describe myself, I might be an asshole, but I'm not a dick. I don't know, I'm a pretty big dick. Speaking of, by the way, unreal. That was a weird. So some guy <laughs> on my like, crazy. That was a weird sound to make right after you said that. Sorry. So uh, this eighteen-year-old guy on Snapchat, oh boy, posted uh, someone else's story saying repost if your penis is larger than six inches. And it's like, I looked at this. Who are you trying to impress? Yeah, you're eighteen. Grow the fuck up. Like, what is this? Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. I don't understand that. That's stupid. I, I don't know. I just want to say this. Don't do that. If you're listening to this, you're a clown. Don't do that. What is that going on? Don't do that. Oh, yeah. It's been doing, it's been asking this like eight times already. By subscription? No, yeah. don't restart. It actually has an option. <laughs> restart your computer. The actually has an option that says next century. <laughs> so Will you? it's like, no, I don't want to do this anymore. It's All right. Next time. century. Click. Okay. Where do you guys want to start? Top man. of your list, man. Yeah. Don't make We're this difficult. The top. Why would we? Um, you're, okay. Middle. Are you seeing Joker this weekend? Yeah, Sunday probably. You're like watching. 70% You're chance. seeing it Sunday, but you work Monday, right? You're seeing it Sunday. Yeah. I'm seeing it tomorrow. I'm super excited. Are you guys excited? I think it should yeah. be good. I don't know. I'll probably get more excited when I'm about to see it, but like, I still <clears throat> haven't seen uh, anything. <laughs> Why would you extend it? <laughs> what? Jeez. I still haven't seen any uh, trailers. How the fuck? Okay. I haven't seen, seen a single trailer? I saw the first one, and that was it. Good for you. Then some guy... Uh, you should bring it down, maybe. Okay. Some guy on my meme page commented saying he does something, and it wasn't a like huge plot. Like it wasn't a. I looked at like okay, like whatever. I don't think anything you see in the trailer is going to be a major for this one. I think they're smart about it, and I I, it's only going to give away a small amount that you. Let's be honest. You know there's going to be a chaos factor in it. You know there's going to be the sad clown factor. The only thing in the newest trailer was the game show thing that Mm -hmm. went on, or not game show. Sorry, the talk show. That was in the second trailer with Robert yeah, De Niro. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That was the only surprise I got out of it, the fact that Robert De Niro's in it. Yeah. Sorry, spoiler. Actually, you're right. Yeah, but yeah, he was in the trailer. Fuck, yeah. like you, you care. Do you even know who Robert De Niro is? Yeah, oh, I okay. don't. But now I know <laughs> someone named Robert De Niro is going to be in that movie. Oh, man. Do not look him up. I'm going to stop in the middle, of, like as uh, soon as he shows up, that's Robert De Niro. You don't even know. <laughs> yeah, but I'll know. He's a game show host, a talk show host. Oh, whatever. There's, there's, something, one. there's something interesting going on right now, too, with that, around that movie, and it has nothing to do with... Um, a theater, uh, and stuff. a theater got shut down in the states because of a threat. There's a credible See, I threat. They were in it. Mm-hmm. I thought they were doing like uh, undercovers, like they, they were doing. That I kind thought of some thing. had metal detectors. Did you see the meme I did, where it's like, uh, it's the photo, it's from Spider-Man Three, where Peter's watching MJ, and he's like, you know, grooving to like whatever her play, and then Harry, <clears throat> Harry's just watching him with a death stare, and it's like me enjoying Joker a little too much. The yeah. undercover cop, in my theater is Harry, just staring at him. <laughs> That was pretty funny. Okay, I stole it. I thought it was pretty good. Um, no, it's it's there's this weird thing going on because before the movie got released to the public, yeah, everyone's raving about it, standing ovations, ten yep. minutes or so of standing ovations, all yep, that right. stuff. And then now, ever since Todd Phillips had his comment on woke woke culture, it seems like people are going out of their way to dislike this movie. Have you noticed that? I don't know. I I think that I think that Joe like Todd Phillips, the director, correct. Yeah, so Todd Phillips I, had comments on saying how he was afraid to come back to do movies or comedy because of woke culture. 
I don't understand why he has to make a thing about everything. Just release your movie, man. Well, just, every, just everybody like, does. Yeah, but like, come on. What, did, what is he? He's the one who said the, the yeah, stupid comment. You did the hangover. You know, over, yeah, that's Hodge. fine. Like he did, I guess they call his genre cringe comedy because like it's yeah. like. You cringe, but, but it's I, funny. But yeah. it wasn't cringy at the time. And I think now people are like, oh, it's cringy or whatever. I don't um, think so. I've there was somebody else uh, on, I saw on Twitter that said he had listed a bunch of movies that came out after 2015. Yeah. But I don't think that this quote unquote woke culture really hit its stride until like two years ago. I think in the past year and a half to two yeah. years is when it's really been like pretty viral. Mm-hmm. So why are they constituting but, him as the woke culture? Like, what's well, the, 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 fact the woke that... culture is everybody going against anything. Like, it's the same oh. thing as PC culture, oh, okay. PC culture, woke culture, all that kind of hey. SJWs, all of them. They're kind of those terms are being branded on a radical left ideology. Yeah. That's like, oh, this is bad and this is bad. And we're going to cancel this person and cancel that person. Which and it's not for you. But the thing is, this, yeah, yeah. First of all, a lot of times it's not for you, or mm-hmm. it was, and whatever. But they have done, they've gone to extremes. Yeah. And you saw what happened to James Gunn. You saw what happened to that, that, what was that? Chad, no, Hardwick? Chris, Chris Hardwick. Hardwick. Um, a lot of people are getting, getting it thrown at them. Kevin Hart, mm-hmm. all yeah. of that stuff. And this is stuff that happened years ago. Well, so yeah. On his side of it, I get it because he's seen people in his industry being attacked or canceled. And because Hollywood is so left. Like it is over overtly left that he's like, I don't think what I would want to do would be received. However, and I know we've it kind of sounds like we've been flip flopping on this topic a lot because most of the time we're against the woke culture, but it's only when something actually happens. Mm -hmm. In this case, when you look at the movies that have come out since at least Deadpool, Mm -hmm. even in the last couple of years, like that Good Boys movie. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's a hard, hard movie. Right. Mm -hmm. So and the director just let it happen. Oh, yeah. Um, it's not a hard. It's like or like it's an intense movie for, with kids that age talking okay, about. Okay, I guess just like the content. But let's be honest, that's how kids yeah. talk that way. But I, yeah. I I understand where he's coming from because I know a lot of people are afraid to speak yeah. up. Mm-hmm. But I think at that point, and I think it was more so just a comment from him being like, "Listen, yeah. I didn't come back for a year because I saw what happened to a lot of people, mm-hmm. and I saw how people all are outraged at everything. Yep. And you know what? I didn't want to deal with it. So he comes back with a movie about. The joke about Joker, about Arthur, who is seen like by what it looks like, because I haven't seen the movie yet. It looks like he's been beaten down by the world Mm -hmm. and he rises and attacks. Mm -hmm. And by attacks, I mean, makes a stance against a world that Mm -hmm. has been beating him down, which, again, for me, I'm a massive fan of Taxi Driver. Mm hmm. I'm all for that because that's very similar theme in that yeah. and other movies. I think as much as there's this woke culture, there's people. I think the the age group or generation you want to call it, just they're the most vulgar than that has ever been. I yep, think there's a little sure. bit more reservation in the older generations, and even the f- stuff they've dug up, it's pretty tame compared to what's being said nowadays. To be honest, it's just by whom. But just saying, the general younger kids and stuff. Yeah, like no. that. you. Are, that's what I'm saying. Truly, what was on Good Boys is probably what. It's only most funny. conversations are having and how it's kids funny interact. because it's true. Yeah, like is the only first-hand, the only time firsthand experience. We're talking. That, we have mm-hmm. a different age gap here, at yeah. least ten years difference, and we're pretty close. So we grew up in the same era of like mm-hmm. how kids inter, you know, talk to each other. There's always a few people that are a little heavy and whatever, but there's definitely more. And we've kind of discussed this, and that's what I'm saying. The woke culture is also the same generation and kids that are also the most savage about stuff. And that's funny because I remember I read somewhere saying, how does the generation raised on Family Guy in South Park get offended over everything? That's a weird thing. That's 100% like, true. I don't know what happened because honestly, there's people like I know lots of people who are yeah. normal. Like, I don't want to say normal, but like, yeah. you know, like just don't get offended over everything. And there are people my age mm-hmm. who just like you can't say a joke. You cannot, yeah. even if it's like nothing racist, nothing yeah. sexist, they'll find something wrong with it. Yeah. Even if it's like. An Italian joke. As an Italian Greek, mm-hmm. if I make an Italian joke, I remember one person got mad. You can't. That's racist. Like I'm fucking. Actually, it's it, not. Yeah, I'm Italian. Italians no. are not a race. Yeah, culturalist. I think a lot of people are. They also mistake what's a race and what's a culture. We actually talk about an anthropology. How there's like no races. Like black isn't a race. White isn't a race. You know stuff like that. It's really, hey, mm-hmm. interesting. that's interesting. That's bold. Like, really, yeah. It's bold. <laughs> well, I was talking to somebody today at work, uh, and we. 
don't know how I was trying. I found a way to explain it. I don't know if I could find it now, but he was, we, we got on that topic. Right. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, well, I mean like a lot of stuff, it's, it really just boils down to tribalism. Like it's not that other people don't trust other, like they just don't trust other people outside of their tribe period. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter really what their race or culture mm-hmm. is. Like, I'm going to trust somebody that looks like you, mom, and dad before anybody else. Why? Because that's who raised me. Mm-hmm. That's who, since I was born, that, that's who's protected me, who's been there for me, everything like that. So automatically from that little sphere, it's going gonna, it's gonna to grow. But every individual that you, is introduced to that after is you trust less and less as that circle opens up. So... I'm not saying we're and we're not saying that racism doesn't exist because it does. And it's awful. OK, but a lot of the cases that people are crying foul for is really just a case of tribalism mm-hmm. and that and, and not tribalism in the negative sense. It's that you trust the people that you grew up with or from the moment you gained consciousness. The people that were around you are the people you're going to trust the most going forward. And. That's why you feel even more betrayed when a best friend betrays you. Well, right? I, there's actually a term for that. What you, I remember learning about it last year. It's called like the monkey sphere. Hmm. So this hmm. is an actual like thing where uh, like realistically, each person can only care about 150 people, like realistically. Hmm. And then outside of their monkey sphere, there's just people that kind of like fall off. So they don't remember their name. They don't really care. So if you're inside the monkey sphere, like, you have a certain amount of people you can actually like and like give a shit about. And outside your monkey sphere, are kind of those people that you don't really care about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, like, uh, like if a bus crashed in Haiti and like fifty people died, it'd be bad. But like, you don't know them, so it's like whatever. But like in Humboldt, like a cu- bunch of like you know teenagers, there's a whole a, bus like, full a, of yeah, teenage bus kids, yeah, full of people died. I didn't know any of them, but it still was like it hit closer to home because it's like, okay, like it that was hit, close. That yeah. hit worldwide, actually. Yeah. Geographically speaking, yeah. it's close to home, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like it was right. It's 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 the equivalent of being right next to your like right next door. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that is a yeah. great way to put it. And so I, but in, in regards to Todd Phillips stuff, like a lot of people are. I'm noticing that people are negatively reviewing the movie and using, like, explaining it in ways that the original reviews uh weren't like they were they're not praising it the same way mm-hmm. now that could just be the movie itself again we haven't seen it mm-hmm. but it seems interesting that the second he came out with those comments negative reviews started coming out one guy today i was listening to uh he said that it's a great performance in a mediocre film and he made a point to talk about how todd phillips is wrong about woke culture woke culture or yeah. his comments were wrong and yeah. i'm like automatically i'm like oh you're biased Bye bye. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, because I have a friend of mine, a female friend of mine, actually Brandon, who was here on my um, history of film or something, whatever okay. though that deep dive that we did a little while ago. His wife wrote out an article, and or not an article, but put a big post about it because she adored it. Joker. She's like, yeah, oh. she's like, this is amazing. It's so powerful. It's like, you know, and and she's, you know, she's a very outspoken individual, and she's a smart individual, and you know, Brandon's also smart person like individual too and stuff and so i was like oh sweet like first of all she's female so she gravitated towards it Mm -hmm. and second of all there was nothing there about his comments it was just the movie itself and so i don't know i think the biggest like uh just the worst kind of point made or argument made in today's like age or day is that video games cause violence. And I feel like... I've been noticing that more and more. And now I feel like this movie is also being portrayed in that light, yeah. saying this movie's going to cause violence. Like, I, Never once have I played a video game, like playing GTA, where I killed a bunch of people. Like, yeah, I'm inspired. Let's go outside right now. Let's just go rob a bank. Mm-hmm. That's never happened. And if it is, if it has happened to someone, it goes deeper than them picking up the like, controller and starting to play the game. It's yeah. They didn't just pick that up out of nowhere. That's some like deeper issue going on. I'll go even further. Go deeper. Even when I've been in, when I've been playing, like let's say a Grand Theft Auto, in our early days, I remember we used to play and we used to just like mow down people all the time. Yeah. But now, like I don't know, if maybe it's because the NPCs are so much better rendered. I actually like don't like running into or shooting don't look down. At them. I think there's a lot more to do than just a run into people too. I think yeah. that's also it too. <laughs> the, Sometimes the like, content, the point. content is there not to worry about just mowing down people and. Like, and don't get me wrong. I'll go on a rampage just for fun and just start shooting people. There's, well, there's an actual point in there as yeah. a rampage, but you're fighting off like gang members, not really yeah. innocents. Ah, uh, no, I choose Sometimes I'll, you know, it's a quick way to get uh, some stars. You know? yeah. Listen, I'm not sitting there crying and like driving the speed limit and stuff, yeah. but I'm also not 
going out of my way to do it because I just mm. don't feel the need to. Like, yeah. just, like Red Dead made a point of that. Like, if you shot somebody, like your honor dropped real fast, yeah. and it was hard to get it back. I'd say the only game that influences me is Need for Speed. That's fun. Mm. That's just fun. You know what I'm saying? Me damn, too. damn traffic laws, though. You know, I haven't played Need for Speed. <sighs> Anyways, I hope. I mm-hmm. hope it doesn't go too far with this whole thing. It's just it's just interesting how the comments coming out about the yeah. movie are lessened or are less are coming back negatively after those comments. Yeah. Which if and I'm not saying he's right and I'm not saying he's wrong. I'm just saying that he probably felt at the time before he decided to come back with another comedy movie, before he got onto board with this, he was noticing what was happening, like we all have and everybody else has. Mm-hmm. And he's like, Listen, I'm just gonna not because I don't need this in my life, Mm -hmm. right? And Mm -hmm. you know what? Totally get it. Well, I know for like uh, at the movie theater I worked at, like I have to tell people uh, about the movie and like if they're going to see Joker, I have to tell them like this is 18A. Mm -hmm. Like if you don't like this, I I tell them what's, I tell them like the rough gist, like it's very dark, like violent, like all this shit going on. So if you don't like it, do not see it. Yeah, but wait, did we get the 18A rating? Because it's R in the States. I don't think we have our. No, it just goes up to 18A. It goes 18A and then they there's. skip it? We have like different. I don't know. It goes so. I should know this. But it goes PG. Mm-hmm. Then it goes. Uh, I don't think we have PG 13. I think we just go up 14A, mm-hmm. 18A. And I think there's one more, but it's very hard to get in Canada. I think it might be R, but it's yeah. like very. It's R-R, R-R, yeah, but it's not like an R. <laughs> 18A is pretty much R. Yeah. But like R, R- is like yeah. hard to get here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like, yeah, they do the some more sick shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this movie's rated. Just, show, a just shows you how messed up Canadians are. They don't even have a rating for R. I guess so. It's yeah, X. Fair enough. R. X. For extreme. X. Whoa. Whoa. It'd be a bad movie to see. <laughs> this is the wrong Joker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> um, I guess right. we can springboard there into Scorsese's comments. Sure. So, Martin Scorsese, who mm-hmm. you all know I adore. Yep. Uh, he had some choice words to say about the Marvel movies. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll read his comment. Also, I realized that when I messaged you and I said, get your head out of your ass, it says, get your head out, take your ass. So, yeah, so yeah. totally. I'll take your ass. Total, total win for, uh, for autocorrect or yeah. autospell or whatever. Anyways, did I send it to you guys? Yes. Yeah. Why is it not coming up? You just scroll up. Yeah. It only shows one of the links in your thing. Well, basically, he's just saying oh, that. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. You, you just so said this Marvel is the exact films. ones. Yeah. The, the exact comments from him, he Cinema. says, I don't see them revealed Scorsese about the Marvel movies because he says he says I tried you know but that's not cinema honestly the closest I can think of them as well made as they are with actors doing the best they can under the circumstances is theme parks it isn't the cinema of human beings trying to convey emotional psychological experiences to another human being Mr. Scorsese yeah you have graced us with some of the greatest movies my favorite movie of all time I can't agree with it totally. Yeah. I, I I disagree with uh, with a good chunk of that. Mm-hmm. One thing I want to say though is at least he stated he gave it a chance. He's not saying because a lot of other yeah. directors have come out saying like fuck these movies because like you know the movie gets crushed at the box office. Like, he's sure. just saying I tried it, I didn't like it, and he's saying like pretty much it's not for me. And he said like people like it. He saw the appeal in it. He said like yeah. I just think like he's not being a dick about it. He's like mm-hmm. it, it's it's just an elitist comment to me in my opinion because the stuff that he brings out is like drama action gold let's be honest well not gold action sorry it's dr- dramatic drama gold. dramatic and yeah. it, and that's the that's his style that's what he knows and that's like the the golden age mm-hmm. of cinema you know what i'm saying like he well, i think every golden age has a different like every for sure. generation has a different golden he has age. this he has a pretty much the same uh blueprint for a lot of his movies to be honest let's be honest he, he they're close they're close in nature uh, he sticks to a genre that he knows. It's not like he's gonna go do a comedy. Well, it's, it's it's a genre that he's good at. Like exactly. So, cinema in the sense of the interactions that you create and the characters that are there and how they interact and the caliber of actors is up there and the content is rich enough to pull that out of everybody. And yeah, the Marvel movies don't need much to be honest. It mm-hmm. it, it does rely heavily on um, CGI. The CGI is partly it. The action within it, it speaks a little bit higher. Um, but you do, but the character development, I think, ended up being a little bit better in the Marvel films because the, the how you created these characters and how they grew, time. you had more time to do it. Whereas his movies, the character development is very obvious. I would say, like their their trajectory, like 
kind of different, right? I, I'm not. I, my, I can't say that they're obvious yeah. because I disagree with that. That because I think like there is no Marvel movie mm-hmm. better than Scorsese's movies to me. No, even the movies that I adore mm-hmm. to no end. None of them are in my top five yeah. films, right? Mm-hmm. Like I watch like my top five, aside from The Mask and The Lion King, really consists of like act like just just your typical just human humans, no yeah. monsters or anything like no, that. No, the Dark Knight. No, the Dark Knight's not, not on there. Okay, okay. Um, like your Fight Clubs Seven, which I watched last night. Oh my god, it's so mm-hmm. good! It's still so good. Okay, that makes sense. I'm sorry. You said Fight Club and then Seven, and yes. I'm like. Fight Club 7, when the fuck do they make 2 to 6? Oh, right. that was S-Club 7's a new movie. <laughs> S-Club 7 decided to have a Fight Club. Yeah, Fight Club 7. Club. And that makes, uh, that makes sense now, uh, I think. Scorsese's movies, like the Goodfellas number one, uh, Ten- Tarantino's movies, yeah. which are a little bit more fantastical because he likes yeah. to play with genres. It's, um, yeah, it's... it's I, I, we've heard I just it from think, Steven Spielberg. Yeah. Who else have we heard it from? We've heard it from a lot of people. Especially James Cameron. The, James, no, I think. Well, I don't know what James Cameron said. James, Cam- I, James Cameron uh, mainly said it. Actually, he said it more towards Aquaman. Okay, his comments. So yeah. this is kind of well, you know what? Tell him he had his chance in Entourage, <laughs> and now it's done. So uh, he he did it towards the fact that like it wasn't realism what was done in Aquaman. Of course, it's not realism. It doesn't need to be realism. And game wasn't so, realistic. Again, another elitist kind of comment from. You know, and and the funny thing is, Cameron does CGI heavy stuff and and stuff, but yes, he tries to stray onto the side of somewhat realism. Yeah. Whereas, again, these action and Marvel and superhero and DC superhero movies are over. Like, you don't need to focus on what's normal and what's the rules. It's the lore is created, and the world that's it's in is beyond what we know. But I think, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, it's not. Uh, my thing to that is i think that there is a lot more to it Mm -hmm. and it's all it all exists outside of the action yeah okay so if you take civil war and in and um and uh winter soldier Mm -hmm. if you take the action scenes out of it yeah those are political thrillers stuff that's going on yeah uh government overreach um uh the uh, spies infiltrating a system that's there and mm-hmm. you've got one guy that needs to try to unravel it all. Okay. Yeah. Now I'm not saying it's analogous to any other really, really good um, political thrillers in that aspect. Yeah. However, the core of it lies with the yeah. characters and, and if, yeah. it's all it, there. I would say they're at, they're only enjoyable because we, we like the characters because mm-hmm. if they would have given us the same amount of movies, but we didn't give a shit about anybody because they didn't flesh them out at all, mm-hmm. then everything would have felt empty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Tony having an, an interaction with his dad back in the 70s yeah. wouldn't have had any weight to it if we didn't know that the character was broken, mm-hmm. made all the mistakes that he did, yeah. uh, was not even close to being perfect, mm-hmm. regretted a lot of his life, was an alcoholic, especially in the comic book yeah. run. They didn't touch on it too much in the movies. <laughs> uh, just a broken individual that just did what he could to try to fix his mistakes, and he kept yeah. getting himself into it, right? Yeah. Um, Steve Rogers, yeah, the golden boy, but always a guy that's trying to fit into yeah. that system. We didn't get the we didn't get the iteration of Thor. I think Thor's trilogy is really Ragnarok, the first one, Ragnarok, Infinity War, and then Endgame. So it's not just a trilogy, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah. even just Ragnarok, Infinity War, and Endgame, that's a trilogy for Thor. Yeah. Honestly, I think you can even throw no no joke. I would even say Dark World and the Thor original have his arcs, his character arcs, how deep his psyche and it's stuff like. It's all there. Yeah. Yeah. Because all you, you the Thor has it all the way through, character. even Steve Rogers. So like it's there. Yeah. And that's where the character development is more broadened versus like one, one piece. Yeah. So it's got to be stretched out and put together. If you piece it all together and get these clips, I think it's a lot better. And then but. so now James Gunn has responded to it. Yeah. I remember I was going to bring um, that up. He says. Martin Scorsese is one of my one of my five favorite living filmmakers. I was outraged when people picketed The Last Temptation of Christ without having seen the film. I'm saddened that he's now judging my films in the same way. And then he says Then he says that said I will always love Scorsese. 
be great for his first contribution to cinema and can't wait to see The Irishman. And I'm not saying religious zealotry is the same as not liking my movies or in the same category. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is I'm not fond of people judging things without actually seeing them, whether it's a movie about Jesus or a genre. Look at James Gunn covering his ass. Wow, he's learned. He has learned. I'll give him that. See, and the thing is now, when you look at it, because I'm such a fan of Scorsese, I can't argue with either of these guys. And and I totally get where James yeah. Gunn's coming from because of the fact that it's like, no, like he he does love his movies and he kind of he gets it. But he yeah. says, I tried seeing some of them. So let's say the last movie he saw was Iron Man 2. Yeah. It's not really going to leave a good taste in your mouth. It really wasn't until after Dark World that things really kicked. In. Aside from the first Avengers and Iron Man and I would say the first Captain America and obviously yeah. um, Winter Soldier. Who knows how many he's seen and who knows if he's even seen Guardians. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's a lot of stuff in there, especially in the later Marvel ones where they really kicked into gear. It's just, I, I think overall it's just funny that these guys even bother to say anything. You know that's going to create problems. Like, just keep it to yourself. If you want to talk amongst your peers about it, but to put it out on blast, like, it's a bit of a dig. It's probably, though, because they're putting out, what, 19 up movies or 13 Oscar categories? Or yeah. Well, they're, yeah, they're going after 13. Is it? Yeah. I have no idea. I'm going to have to take a look. You sent it, right? Yep. I ah. would say, though... To his comments, mm-hmm. only two MCU films that come to mind right now I would consider like actual like great films. Mm-hmm. Like besides the fact that it was a superhero movie, mm-hmm. The Winter Soldier mm-hmm. and Infinity War mm-hmm. are the only two I would consider. Like you would take Infinity War over Civil War, yeah, easily, <laughs> easily Infinity War over Civil War. Infinity War was just I'm not saying I would, but I, I, I think I'm, I'm in torn. Infinity War just because of the. The scale, the sc- yeah, exactly. The, the scale it, it, and the outcome that came from it, like the first time you see your superheroes lose right. terribly, like not terribly, but they lose. Well, I mean, half the world. See, I, got, I felt it. it's pretty terrible. I, Listen, it was brutal for sure, and I loved Infinity War, and it's a toss up between that and in Civil War because of how broken everybody was yeah. after Civil War. I think like, Infinity War though was like that was like emotional for like everyone in theater like you yeah. felt it in the theater like when it happened like it was yeah. just dead silent and then all the memes that came out of infinity war yeah just make it like yeah that much well better. and they're and it, and it's 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 just an it's an impact right yeah. because you again because you care because they have actually gone down to an emotional level between yeah, superhumans, but human emotions. Yeah. No matter how many superpowers somebody has, there's still a human aspect, especially from the ones that came from Earth. Yeah. Right? Guys like Captain America who will <clears throat> always, like, facing down an entire army with a broken shield and a cut arm, yeah. and that's it. And he's staring down the barrel, and he's willing to go out there and do Whatever it alone, happens, right? Yeah. There's there's certain things there. Now, I but again, I get it. Um and I'm probably more biased than the other times that I talked about it because it is Scorsese and I do love him and I love his movies and I don't think anybody could have made his movies mm-hmm. except for him and his movies. Yeah. Like I love, I even love Silence and Silence was a rough one to watch. Mm-hmm. It was a rough, and not because it was bad. It was just a long ass movie, but it was yeah. rough. I find it funny though, how he singles out like the Marvel movies, yeah. meaning that he has seen some he's liked, I would assume. Because that would mean, like, I'm assuming the ones he would like mm-hmm. would be the Dark Knight trilogy, because that's just, yeah. like, that's regarded as, like, just one of the best trilogies of, like, not, like, you know, like, the top five, but, like, still, yeah. like, top hundred at least. Do you think he would, though, just because the po- the culture does? I think he's noticing them only because the population adores them yeah. so much. I think that's the thing. And because, again, they're being nominated for Oscars, and he's an old-time guy. It's like your parents being like, oh, those aren't films. Go watch this Western fe- featuring but, Clint Eastwood. But what the joke kind of the segue right to now. our discussion of the what they're nominated for. It's mainly technical stuff, to be honest, I would think. Directing and the technical side of things. Well, I'm going to be honest. No one in Endgame oh, I'm gonna go performs an Oscar-worthy like performance. performance. No, yeah, no. I would say the most Oscar-worthy performance was... Robert Downey Jr. in that five minutes when he just got back, when he was like drained of life. Yeah. That scene, I would say that's the closest, but I don't think it's enough to warrant an Oscar performance. The rest of it was just mm-hmm. a hell of a lot of fun. I would say Scor- Thor deserves the Oscar. Yeah. The, the range of emotions that he was able to do, I'm like, every time I watch it, I, I'm heartbroken. Mm-hmm. I'm absolutely heartbroken. I just wish it was more serious, like Infinity War. Like Infinity War, I felt like had that good balance where it's like, like it was darker. 
but it was still like that jokes every once in a while to like lighten the mood. Mm-hmm. But in Endgame, it felt like it was just kind of like just too funny. <laughs> really? Like it wasn't like Guardians of the Galaxy two. Like like lo- levels of like how much they threw jokes in there. Yeah. But it just felt like it could have been a darker movie. Like it didn't have to be like you know like DC dark, but like still just you know. Like, but you had Infinity War. They're they're the they're one giant yeah. movie. Exactly. That's why it's so weird if you just watch it back to back. Like the tone mm-hmm. just changes. Not necessarily because well, like, you had a five year gap. Yeah, but after like, you know, I don't know. We're not going to the five year gap again. We're but dropping it, the but Fortnite comment right now. <laughs> but, but that's a thing though, right? Like if you watch them back to back, the second that Infinity War happens, and then. They're there, and then they finally bring back Tony because it's been what? How long was he in space before they found him? Like a week? A uh, must days, have been at least whatever yeah, it was. A week or two. Like he's almost dead. He's on. He's yeah. actually writing his death note, right? That to Pepper, who mm-hmm. if she even finds it, then he comes back, and the whole team is quote back together, but not because everyone's defeated and they lost all their friends and they're the only ones that can fix it. Then you've got five years of people trying to live out their lives, but they're all they're they're not gonna let it go. Black Widow's a mess, everybody's a mess, Thor gained weight, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I would say it's I would say it's just as dark because Infinity War was only dark until the end. The rest of it was just barreling towards action, right? Mm -hmm. And then it was only an ending that was just like Holy fuck! Like, sold and the opening when they mm-hmm. killed everybody, half the people in Asgard, and he killed Loki, right? But I get what you're saying. I think I think that whole sequence of them time time traveling was actually a lot lighter in tone than mm-hmm. you would have expected. But yeah, it's the last one with all these guys. Like, you gonna kind of I don't know. It's it's their hopeful trek, so they're trying to get back to their n- normal and it's like how they operate. You know, they joke around with each other and that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. So. Uh, I could see why it had a lighter tone in some, mo- in some of the parts. So Okay, so these are the, the what Disney is campaigning for for the Oscars. Yeah. Best Picture, Kevin Feige. Best Director, Anthony and Joe Russo. The producer gets the Don't see that happening. Oh. Best Adapted Screenplay, Christopher Marks and Stephen McFeely. Don't see it happening. Best Cinematography, I can see it happening, but like nomination. Mm-hmm. Best Film Editing, I'm not sure. Best Production Design, possibly. Best Costume Design, I could see that. Makeup and hairstyling, I might be able to see that. Sound mixing, for sure. Sound editing, I can see it. Visual effects, obviously. Mm-hmm. And original score, that Portals song, and it, which tied into the Arrival, right? Because Arrival was the original. That still gets me. I love that. Mm-hmm. I don't see them winning anything. I know. I could see them winning CGI. Maybe. Uh, the technical makeup. stuff, yeah. Actually, I don't know, because I feel like it's going to be Joker... Or Endgame, because I feel like Joker's gonna get nominated. You don't even this. know what else is I, being nominated. I don't see Joker. Yeah, like, makeup. What other like for like makeup? Because it's kind of like, makeup's kind of like the comic book like genre is like. I don't see Joker happening. Uh, for that because no, because Suicide s- Squad can win makeup. <laughs> Any comic book movie can win makeup. But yeah. it actually had That's a lot actually of makeup. Sad that it, Suicide right? Squad won it. It's an Oscar worthy film. That, no. It's not. I remember when that happened. It was on it's the a, podcast. It's a Razzie worthy film. I was talking about it. I'm like, what is a Razzie worthy film? What movie? Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad. Oh, I remember when yeah. we did that one video. I'm like, this is an Oscar like winning film. This is a Suicide Squad. <laughs> and it was a joke to bring it back up. <laughs> and then eventually I eventually stopped because it just was a bad movie. Yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> Which is why I, I I hated Cara Delevingne for so long. Who just based on her performance on that? It was really see. Weird. I I love watching her in interviews. She is. I haven't hilarious. seen anything but Suicide Squad, and uh, but it, she just uh, reminds me of little, older Billie Eilish. Her and a little bit. Her, her and uh, actually, you know what's funny? I listened to the whole Billie Eilish album with like the bad guy in it recently. I've only listened to Bad Guy on the radio. Forced. To no, like I listened to the whole album. It's good, man. Honestly, like Bad Guy isn't a bad. I'm like, no, okay, no, I can not see. that song. That song is fine. The actual, the rest of the songs on the album. Quite well, good. Why the fuck are like? Why is the radio only playing that one song? Because it's she has an it, album that released. No, but it's, it's the hit. it's the most marketable song, like, and she it's still two, good. Just two that get released all the time. Was it? Yeah. Bad guy and one other one. I can't. At first, it. I hated bad guy, and I started listening to him. Like, okay, like I don't like it per se. I was like, I can see why people enjoy it though. Yeah. Just the raspiness. I don't know. It's just like I'm the bad. Oh my guy. god. Okay, we're gonna get into this, and we're probably gonna get the hate for this. Ugh. Who the hell is Robin Malcolm? Don't know who that is. Oh, uh, he's uh. She's an actress. Oh, he, she's she, a New Zealand like actress. A this she had a minor role in the Two Towers as Morwin. Who was Morwin? Oh, she was played by uh, Robin Michael. No, this no. is that's Robin Malcolm. Malcolm, Let's see, you have a picture of her. I don't have a picture of her. Let's Anyways, these are up? comments in regards to uh, Amazon Lord of the Rings series should cast a female Gandalf. No. Two Towers actress says, no. first of all, no. And everybody agreed on no. Yep. Well, why? 
Okay. How does this that even work? Her. Those old legends, those old mystical stories, they're so based within a patriarchal landscape. Why not Kelly look Rowan? at the magic of matrilineal world where the magical powerhouses are women? First of all, madam, I don't know you, but it doesn't work that way because it's source material. And the reason it's testosterone Her heavy. Kelly Rowan? No, Robin, Malcolm. Oh, totally wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the reason why it may come across patriarchal, okay, it's not that it's patriarchal. It's just that the man who wrote these stories fought in World War One and wrote these stories about men going into battle. Because guess what? He lived one of the most horrific events that anybody has has witnessed. I, like, pe- like the stuff that was going th- on through World War One. He was there. There were no rules in World War One. There was nothing. Going. Okay, and then it got worse for a lot of people. So, listen, you can come up with a powerhouse woman for sure. Guess what? There's a ton of them. Kate Blanchett, wasn't she like a mystical elf? I haven't seen Lord of the Rings, but I assume oh, she yes. was Galadriel. Like the, she was like the high elf. But oh, Kate Blanchett. Yeah, yeah. My sorry. one, like, I don't. But want, I, I, okay, this just seems like. I don't know who the hell Morun. Like, she's I a nobody. I remember. I it's, it, that's not the fact. She's a, she's a nobody, as far as I'm you know concerned. What? I don't know what she played. That to me is not the thing. For me, it's like this comes from source material. Just making a female Gandalf does nothing for you. I don't know what you're trying to like. Try, like, it just seems like she's trying to find another reason. It's like, oh, Lord of the Rings has a bunch of men in it. It was written by a man. It seems logical that men during that. Oh, she played that era. mom that in Helm's Deep when she was running away. Ugh. Like, who are you to make a comment like that? I'm sorry. And know what the worst no. part is? Hey, she the was guys, an actor in Lord of the Rings. The okay. guys at, this, this is the cinema, cinema blend. The guys from Cinema Blend. That makes a lot of sense. As much as I love Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings, it's hard to ignore the fact that both trilogies were wholly testosterone heavy. One of the primary female characters, Liv Tyler's Arwen, didn't get in on much of the action. Was okay, wait, is this a sarcastic to the comment? Are you just reading it that way? That was I'm reading it that way because it's so that was a serious. That was the that was the that was the article. The guy that wrote that article, that was his comment after her quote. Was he making fun of her? No, I'm making fun of that person. Okay, no. yeah, that was my voice pretending to be that person because they're probably sitting there in a chair up like this. Okay, the typewriter or whatever they're yeah. using the computers in front of them, and they're just thinking, oh. I agree with this, and just pressing the buttons away because you don't understand what you're talking about. Well, it's like, oh, that seems like a stupid idea, and someone holds your gun to your head. It's like, no, no, you write that review saying that's a good idea. It's like, okay, I got to do this now because I don't. I'll be a sexist. He pigeonholed himself into, or they pigeonholed themselves. Actually, I'm going to see who wrote this. I don't know. It's stupid. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any sense. We've Uh, already established an amazing Gandalf. If you want to have a female character. Oh, sorry. Uh, the, she she wants someone who could carry the films with the presence of Kate Blanchett in Lord of the Rings character Galadriel. In Malcolm's word, you need actors who have got gravitas and a real lot of personal power and a bit of brilliant. And they'll take this in an absolute way that is meant witchy poo energy, which those two have got and I aspire to. I, I don't fucking stupid. If you want a female character, that's fine. But if you want to change, like, what's the point? Like, why? How do you even like make that? Because it's magic. You change to a f- girl. Why? You Make can't it a perv. change the Sil Marillion. You can't change Tolkien's lore. Like, that's just ridiculous in my, my opinion. May, May Abdulbaki, that's who wrote it. Whatever. You, I don't understand why you're you're wanting to change the lore. Make your own. Find your own. Be creative. Why doesn't Robin write her own story about somebody else and then see if it's going to stick? Yeah, you jag. You jag. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, you know what the problem is, is that instead of being creative and coming up with new ideas, they know that the idea it, sucks. They know that they can't come up with anything better. So they're like, well, Gandalf is cool. They're doing another Lord of the Rings. Let's just make Gandalf a girl for no reason whatsoever. What would, what what is would that her gonna name be? Do? What would Gandalf's name be? As it doesn't even matter. You can, like, if it has nothing to do, I think what she's also learnt going towards is just come up with or just have a female version of Gandalf. So... Well, the matriarchal, the matriarchal um, individual at the top, mm-hmm. okay, that's going to govern this whole new Lord of the Rings thing or be the sorcerer of, will be a female. And it's like, but let me ask you something. You already have Galadriel played by Kate Blanchett, who's amazing, the top being basically one of the top. But she's also an amazing actress. She's an amazing actress, which is what she commented on. Yeah, fair. but 
why must you always have this as well? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's not necessary to create a comment like that. You, you must have a wizard or change Gandalf. Because her comment is basically saying, Gandalf's no longer Gandalf, but Gandalfina. I don't know. But you know well, why what she's she actually saying is that there's too many males in The Lord of the Rings. But again, it's written by a male. Yeah. Does, Write so your own stuff. I can't even remember her name. Robin Malcolm. Yeah, Robin Malcolm. See, we're talking about Robin Malcolm right now. Yeah. That's why she made that comment. Yeah. Because yeah, no one knows so. who the fuck Robin Malcolm is. Basically. I'm going to be heard. I'm, I'm going to make a stupid comment. You know what? I'm I'm really I'm just getting really annoyed with people just wanting to turn every character that's profitable into a female character because mm-hmm. <coughs> sorry, they can't seem to come up with anybody that will work on it, but it's like mm-hmm. you don't have to change everything. You don't have to bitch about what's already there and say, "Oh, there's too many guys in there." Again, it was written by a guy. He was in war with other men. And that's just the way that it, it was. Okay, mm-hmm. like stop shitting on like complaining about everything and and turning male characters into female characters just to have a female character. Yeah. Well, I remember uh, Tom Holland was asked at an interview if he'd like to see like a gay Spider-Man. He said, yeah, like, I'm sure that'd be a great idea to have like another gay spider or have a gay Spider-Man be like somewhere involved. And people misquoted him saying that he wanted to be a gay Spider-Man. He came out saying, no, it's not what I said. I'm just saying and there's they a multiverse. They can do it. My character, it wouldn't see. It just doesn't make sense. Like they, people wanted Tony Stark and Spider-Man to have a relationship. People That's like that, weird. and it's disgusting. That's, uh, pedophilia, it's, it's, pedophilia. It's not, actually, he's all, like seventeen. It's disgusting because he's yeah. It's disgusting because he's a child, and Tony Stark is like a fifty-year-old. Also, man. his father figure is Tony Stark yeah. in this universe. That's yeah. Yeah. disgusting. You guys are My, watching too many uh, videos. Yeah, <clears throat> and also that's not the character. No. Come up with a character, come up with a Spider-Man yeah. who is who covers the entire LGBTQ spectrum, that's fine. But it has to be original. Mm-hmm. Don't just turn one into one yeah. of those identities just for the sake of turning it into that identity. That does nothing. Yeah. Like that's that's the part that I get really annoyed with. Um, just silly. We did talk about James Gunn. I didn't mention that he was saying a- that the DC and the MCU fans are banning together. And he he's might be ca- the one to do it. With well, he's kind of the about. bridge, right? Right now, because he does have number DCU one DCU fans. What are those? Yeah. That universe is dead. Oh, sorry. DC I think d- just CC in general. Yeah. yeah, it's just the fact that he's part of both worlds. Basically, he's mm-hmm. got su- the, su- the Suicide Squad. Yeah, yes, whatever it's called. Anyways, we so he's got about it like two weeks ago. Yeah, he's got Marvel characters coming over there, and then he's obviously hit out of the park with his Guardians of the Galaxy. So for sure. Yeah, he's the bridge between the two right now. And he's got basically. the third Guardians, and so, yeah. like, yeah. I, and I think that's yeah. that's good, because if he be, if he knocks it out with Suicide Squad, which I, I'm i hoping that he will, yeah. Everyone then is. guess what? Everybody can finally unite, and we can all be friends. Mm-hmm. Or you can just, I don't know, stop taking... Uh, I remember someone posted saying, guys, just so you're aware, or Marvel MCU fans, just so you're aware, the Joker doing well... And you know, possibly getting nominated for an Oscar is not a direct attack on you. <laughs> so don't get offended when it's because I don't know. I hate like when I ran entertain facts all the time. This movie's doing good. Oh, it's DC. Screw DC. I hate this. It's like, no, man, you saw the movie. Shut up. Yeah. You spent money to watch it. You're the clown here. <laughs> like, no, they don't care if you hate the movie. You still pay to see it. Basically. Um DC plus shows are per- supposedly gonna have budgets the size of the MCU. That's wild. Which is bonkers. They said that they're Disney. Like, oh, I sorry, DC Disney Plus. plus. Like, Disney Plus. Did I say about? did I say DC? DC Plus. Yeah. I was like, really? Oh, they're sorry. Gonna, they have one. What's it called? DC so, with each D- Disney Plus MCU season ranging from an estimated 100 to 150 million, yeah. individual episodes could cost as much as 25 million to produce. That's wild. 100. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, so, it's not depending on how long they are, but, but how are they going to make their money? Yeah. No, like I'm seriously, how are they going to make their money? I don't know. All I'm saying is that. Most of that money is probably to hire the actors because they're mm-hmm. yeah. high paying actors. They're not especially just like with nobody's. the stylish people. So, you know what my concern is though with this whole TV thing, mm-hmm. and that more it's going to saturate it too much. Nope it's it's the fact that more high priced, high whatever actors are going into the TV realm now. Mm-hmm. I'm. I'm feeling that it's going to be taken a lot from some other up and coming actors that would have otherwise gotten these roles. Mm. Like I think yeah. it's no longer just actors vying for Hollywood movies yeah. that they can't get because they hired, let's say uh, an Anthony Mackie because yeah. he's awesome or they hired a whole, a, a number of other people for let's say 
these other things. Yeah. Not for Falcon, of course, but for other shows. Mm-hmm. But now that they're infiltrating the TV universe so much, especially in Disney Plus uh, and the MCU line on TV, that like a lot of these lower actors aren't going to get those lead roles that they would have. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. worry me, but I think it's. I know, thing. like, I know you're coming from. But I don't think it applies to Disney Plus just because, like, who else is going to be, like, you know, the Falcon and the Winter Understandable. Soldier? Yes. yes. They're going to hire some rando to, like, pop in there, like, yeah. do but, yeah, but I understand. Like, I'm not talking specifically for that. I'm mm-hmm. just saying just more general, TV. Yeah. Like, more and more TV, yeah. they have higher priced actors. Like, high yeah. star quality actors. Here's the thing. Most of the, D- the Disney stuff that's coming out is already established actors and characters. So, there's mm-hmm. their new content probably is where they'll go after maybe some newer people but any movie that they, any any tv series that they've announced let's say in, for the marvel side of stuff it's already established characters well every loki's marvel already show said, has well, every like exactly animated one has even the voice so actors. i think you have to see like the mandalorian is one that will probably give some up-and-coming people to have some secondary roles the the main role goes to pedro pascal correct is it i think I so remember. i think he's the main guy i'm not I sure in a trailer yet but he's 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 not an up and coming. He's fairly renowned now because well, of his and, small role, even in Game of Thrones. And we were also talking about Star Wars last time, yeah. And how like a bunch of MCU actors now want to go to Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Don't do that. Bring some new people. <laughs> yeah. Like I don't want to see Chris Evans in Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Or Brie Larson. I, I don't. Come on. I don't care Chris for Evans Brie is a Larson. Just as much as I don't care for Braid. <laughs> yeah. I don't care for Brie Larson being in Star Wars just as mm-hmm. much as I don't care for Chris Evans or a Robert Downey Jr. or a Chris Hemsworth. I don't want them in there, not because I don't care about Star Wars, because I really don't care about Star yeah. Wars that much, but also, you don't need them in there. Mm-hmm. Like that's what my concern with Star Wars is. It's just going to be MCU in space on a different universe altogether. Yeah. It's like that's not going to work again. Like no. it's just not. I don't want Brie Larson in there because I don't want this to turn into another campaign with her, just like shitting on everything she doesn't like. Well, Brie Larson's already got Marvel going on. Like Chris Evans. Walked away. Yeah. And I remember someone commented on his post saying, like, well, what's wrong with Chris Evans? You know, he left Marvel to go direct and now he's going to be in Star Wars. I'm like, and I responded saying, yeah, he's not stupid. He yeah. has this connection to get into Star Wars. One of the, like, again, he was a part of the big, or one of the biggest franchises in the world mm-hmm. and he has a good friend yep. who's in charge of another big franchise. Mm-hmm. He'd be stupid not to do it. Yep. Yeah. I just so, Chris Evans, I just don't need this go ahead, do it. Honestly, if you don't do it, good business move. I respect it. Played yeah, the cards I, well. Respect. I just think it's silly. Just bring on some new people. Yeah. Um, Star Wars Eddie shit. Murphy in for Beverly Cop, Beverly Hills Cop Four, and after coming to America too. <laughs> I'm excited for both of these. That Should would be you? sweet. I Beverly never watched Hills Cop. Is excellent. I never watched all of them. I think I watched the first one for sure, and I never watched two and three. I've seen one, two. I haven't seen three. Yeah. Well, should, now this will give me a reason. You should watch for sure one and one and two. I haven't seen Coming to America. Oh my god! Because I watched watch the uh, the stock one instead. Oh, okay, money. Uh, the training, training places. Yeah, places. training places. Oh, yes. that's also yeah. good. Mm-hmm. Those are two. Those are some of the best comedies you'll yeah. see there. But Coming to America is wonderful. So what's a sequel? Is it like, is there a story you can follow up on? Like, I guess yeah. it's Akeem's kid. Yeah, they're saying it's supposed to be Akeem's kid. Yeah. And they could be, they'll have Cuba Gooden Jr. maybe in that chair again. But yeah. those old Wesley guys Wesley Snipes are dead. is in it too. Wesley Snipes is going in yeah. it? Yeah. That'll be sweet. Wesley Snipes needs some stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, I'm going to get to Arturo's review because Arturo sent us a review of The Joker. Do you have any Spider-Man news? Oh. I have one quick one. I don't know, it's First news, of all, apparently. I finally saw Spider-Man oh, Far yeah. From Home. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to be watching thanks, it today. <laughs> thanks to a friend of mine that got me some free tickets to I a theater. I've watched it, I think, three times now. I've seen, I've seen Spider-Man more times than I've seen Endgame. Oh, well. That's not the case for me. Um, wonderful movie. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Like... You have no idea how hard it was not to... Daredevil oh as the lawyer. That's what I wanted to say months ago. Daredevil could cross over and be his lawyer in this next movie. But oh, my God. That's all I have to say about it. My jaw was actually dropped. Like when Captain America caught the shield, which I I don't know. No one seems to be commenting on that, where that reference where Cap had the oh, shield. Is. is everyone doing I, that? Yeah, I haven't picked them on it. Mind you, I haven't seen anything, so that's probably yeah. why I didn't see it. Anyways, that was awesome. Everything was awesome. The only two things that I have I have gripes about. Yeah, the only two things I have gripes about. The Mary Jane relationship with Spider-Man, with uh, Peter Parker, real rush. Like, we didn't even know that he liked her that much. And then they kick off right away. Oh, I like her so damn much. It's like, when? Well, the teenagers. Yeah. That's kind of how that, it happens. That, that's some argument, but I'm like, I don't buy it. And then the other one, the only thing in terms of, like, the action that was happening. I wish 
in that hallway part, mm-hmm. he never said, come on, Peter Tingle. Yeah, I, I wish I wish it would have just been like the and then going. That's the like I've watched that scene on YouTube a bunch of times because that was wonderful. Mm-hmm. Not nearly as wonderful. I mean, it was amazing. That whole thing. But I wish he didn't say, come on, Peter Tingle. I think just silence and just him going because they mm. set it up beautifully. But I'm pretty much. I slam dunked my thoughts on Mysterio. He was like his Nightcrawler character, not mm-hmm. to that extent, but pretty close. The bad guy, I mean, that wasn't Maniacal. anything. I think everybody assumed he was going to be the bad yeah, guy. Yeah, people who bitched about Mysterio being a villain for being a spoiler is just. Uh, you clearly don't know who um, Mysterio Hello. Is. <laughs> The I Green Goblin's it. teaming up with Spider-Man in this next movie. Wonder how that's going to end. No villain's been announced. I oh wonder who's going to be the villain. Everything Jeez. about it was just that was been the like I I like Mysterio. Mm-hmm. Um, I just like the illusion parts. I remember playing the shit out of Spider-Man Two on the PS2, mm-hmm. and those Mysterio scenes were amazing. That scene when he was manipulating him, when Fury picked him up, yeah, my jaw was to the floor. I got anxiety. And it was unbelievably done well. Yeah. Sorry, it was unbelievable, and it was done so amazingly well. Mm-hmm. Like, that's that's it. That's <laughs> the, that's the shit. That's and what you do. I train. was stunned, guys. Yeah. There was one for that one like Peter Tingle scene. It was uh, taken like inspiration from Spectacular Spider-Man series, oh. where in the show it's a kind of exact same setup, except he goes and he says like, "Come on, Spider Sense." Or like I'm one of the spider sense or something like that, and he puts uh, the webs as a bandana, ties it over his eyes, and just starts going. That would be <laughs> dope as fuck. And it was like Daredevil kind of like band. It just fucking looked so high. Actually, would have been cool if his eyelids just shut completely and he just went. Okay. That would have been sweet. But too. you haven't talked about J. Jonah Jameson, which oh, is just a sin. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just like I, I don't know or, how to talk about this movie. Or the other thing, I loved the... it. Pretty and they did the they... scroll. The scroll. Ah, the scroll, the scroll was that. No, that's whatever. J. As soon as I saw him jaw dropped, honest to God, I was like, no way. I went yeah. to the bathroom because I was just going to look at the things. I came in as soon as he started. I was like, <gasps> and I like so pulled up behind me. And by pulled up, I mean just walked up. And I was like, my arms were like this because we were on the side, right? So nobody, like we weren't actually in the theater. Bathroom and I'm break. seeing this. I'm like, both of you. Hmm. I'm like, they fucking did it. I'm like, they fucking did everything. And not yeah. only that, they did the most Spider-Man thing possible. They gave Spider Man a shitty life to to yeah. go into. Like that's Spider Man. It's every good thing is always undercut and taken away from him. That's his life. And I was just like, "You did it. You guys fucking nailed it." This movie. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, He's the crazy son of a bitch did it. So oh there's god. these news articles coming out though. Yeah, and people find it shocking how it's like uh, a rumor that Kevin Foggy is writing Spider Man out of the MCU. And I was like, "Wait, what?" But he just got a movie. He has two movies. Like, what the fuck did you expect was going to happen? What do you think was going to happen at the end of these two movies? It's going to be the exact same deal where they set up a cliffhanger and like, oh, hopefully we make another deal. Guys, I was, yeah, I was so, so happy Marvel with it. Marvel fans are honestly some of the stupidest pieces of shit I've We ever are sometimes. Met. No. I'm putting us in because we're <laughs> stupid asses sometimes. Oh, no, trust me. Like, the things we said that might be stupid, don't compare. I've, I don't know. I did tell you to go fuck yourself and I told you I'd punch you in the face once. That, you're not a Marvel. That wasn't about you Marvel, just turn though. turn off the camera. The battery's Disney. pretty much dead. Um. Anyways, yeah. Goddamn, so good. I, I'm bo- I'm going out to buy the Blu-ray. Which, by the way, breaking news: the Infinity War Saga DVD collection is five hundred and fifty dollars. It's a pirate's life for me. And uh, I don't know, man. I really want it. <laughs> it looks real but good. That's five fifty probably for Blu-ray. Add another hundred bucks at least for four K. I thought it was coming out together. Yeah, I feel like it would just be the same one pack. I don't one do, pack. There's no way they're doing two of those. I think you, I think you said They're not yeah. releasing two versions. Yes, they are. Hold Why? Because on. on. so one's stu- Blu-ray and one's 4K. Why aren't they just at least 4K? Here it is. Hold on. Here it is. Not everyone has Marvel 4K. Marvel Studios, the Who Infinity cares? Saga box set. You can watch set. it either way. Guys, guys. Maybe. Will consist of all 23 movies, Cinematic Universe movies, on both 4K, UHD, and Blu-ray. But I think it's oh. in it. So you're saying it has both options. Yes, that, and I think that's what he's saying. It's all one cost. Five hundred and fifty bucks, which is only twenty five dollars for all the movies, so it's really not that much when you break it down. <laughs> but it's still a one a one shot price for that much. It's a lot of money. It's a lot. Splitsies, yeah. splitsies <laughs> on a gravy boat. Yeah. But anyways, so that's happening, and then um, 
Okay, I'm going to read Arturo's review. So this is our review from Arturo. You guys all know him. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. All right, getting into it. Go for it. He says, I, I want to start this thing. review off by saying I'm still processing what I watched. I just watched. Definitely need to see it again before I can make a truly a final verdict and where it stands with me. Don't get me wrong. I very much enjoyed this film. It's essentially about a man who's down on his luck, can't catch a break, and is beaten by life repeatedly until he inevitably snaps. Okay. I had moments that made me laugh. It had moments that made me uncomfortable. A few, actually. And it had moments that made me really hope for this Arthur Fleck character. Hope that he gets the great life he deserves, but ultimately never gets to see. Now, to make it very clear, this is a slow burn. Heard a few people talk about how it felt as though it dragged. I personally didn't feel the same way. He says, some shots linger or focus on certain details a bit too long, but they said they really added to the story. They're spending a good 30 seconds on Arthur just laughing when it isn't called for or reading slash hearing what type of jokes he considers funny. Oh, it isn't called for. I don't know. All the little things building up that really take our character from CRA to ZY. Now on Joaquin Phoenix's performance, I honestly feel I can't say anything positive that hasn't already been said. Oh, the man fucking kills it, which was literally something I lean over during the middle of the film to mention my friend. He does such a great job. Broken individual, takes action for his life for the first time, feels as though he's just being heard. Of course, this with this iteration of the Joker, there's going to be comparisons to Heath Ledger's character portrayal. Honestly, though, I feel you can't really compare the two. Yes, they're the same character, but they're done so differently, it almost feels as though they're not to me. To me, Heath's interpretation of the character is still my favorite, but honestly, Joaquin is not far behind. The rest of the cast, of course, was great, but I gotta say, Robert De Niro is still the fucking man. I watched the Alec Baldwin roast the other night that included De Niro, and he honestly looked like a quiet grandpa you'd see in the corner at family gathering just observing everything. So to see him go from that to this is truly amazing. He isn't in the film much, but it still shows what a great actor De Niro is. One negative I have is a spoiler, so I'll save it. Um, he liked the film a lot. It might not be for everyone, but I can honestly say I'm looking forward to seeing it in theaters again. Uh, I recommend it if you get a chance. Sweet. That's good. Mm-hmm. That's Arturo. And usually like... Scott good reviews because that's our second one. And thank you for sending in short notice. He literally messaged me before we started, like five minutes before we started recording. So we that's there. Sweet. We actually did record as it happened. Oh, so you're right, actually. Yeah. Sorry. He messaged me initially before okay. we started and I continue the conversation. You are correct. So that was that. I'm so, so excited for it. Um, it Kingsman trailer. Oh, there was a Kingsman trailer. Did you see it? Did you see, no. did you see it? Oh, yeah, I did. Looked pretty good. I'm excited for it. Yeah. Looks amazing. And I love Ralph Fiennes. He's amazing. Uh, the Gentleman also was super interesting. Came out of nowhere. I think it looks... Did you watch that trailer? The With fuck Matthew? are you guys talking about? No, Dude, I, we sent it. We I saw the Birds of Trey. That, birds of Prey. Birds of Trey. That's the only one. <laughs> McFly. Come on. Come on, McFly. Uh, uh, yeah. No, Gentleman looks amazing. Joking. I have no idea what it's about. The, cool. Sort of Gentleman. Yeah. Something like that. I guess so. But the ensemble cast, and like we said, it's the... Guy Ritchie, right? Guy Ritchie. So it's like Snatch and what was the other one we said? Well, no, he's the director of Snatch. And they what did, else? Uh, he did Locked Stockers, Two Smoking Barrels. He did a lot. Honestly, I could see Ensemble, the way he puts it together is amazing. He's got great it's cast, cast and he could probably even have a more solid uh, storyline too. I hope he does it this time because outside of Aladdin, he's had a bad run. He never added. Oh, yeah. He never added uh, King Arthur. On there, like when they said the director of Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels, and whatever else it was, but no, they didn't. It's what he's King best Arthur. known for, anyway. Yeah. Uh, so that no, th- both those look really good. The Zombie Land Two trailer when they did that one thing where they're like Academy Award nominee, 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 winner, like Emma winner. Stone, a co- Academy Award winner, Emma Stone. She's yeah. the only one. I found that so funny. Oh yeah, that's one of this month too. Did yeah, I, I, you guys, I finally watched it. What's that? No? Did you watch it? Oh yeah, so good. Eh? Like a couple months ago, I loved it. Isn't it, was it great. amazing? Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> It's my hit, favorite Jesse Eisenberg performance. <laughs> hit it out of the park. You know what? Uh, he wasn't bad in American Ultra. Oh, you're right. Love that movie. That was that great. Was okay, and you know who else wasn't bad? Kristen Stewart. Yes. So it's him Have you not Kristen watched it? Stewart. It's American, Milan. no, American, American Ultra. Ultra. Very good. Very, you should watch it. You were it's correct. Good. Very good. But uh, no, as soon as I heard there was a second one, I'm like, yay. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was really good. <laughs> and it's weird because... They don't look like they've changed, except for the one like little girl. Yeah, she's, she's the a, only one. But other yeah. than that, yeah, they look exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. which stands to reason. No, I can't wait. I, that'll be probably one of the most fun movies to watch this year, mm-hmm. easily. Okay, uh, Birds of Prey. The poster is unbelievable. Yeah. I love when they actually take care of posters and they do shit. Sony they need to do that more. Did I see the poster? 
They need to do them. They've had a couple. Have you seen them? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, they are very, very fun. I was reading the comments on the YouTube section. No. And someone was like, they really should just name this movie Harley Quinn. Then like the two little dots, Birds of Prey. That one? Yeah, there's four of them that they released. So if you just go Birds of Prey, four posters or whatever. I like that they actually, when I search Birds of Prey, they have like falcons and eagles. <laughs> uh, actually, you know go. what I saw the best? It was this little, uh, uh, it was a, it, I guess it was a meme. It was one crow on a bench and then a second one was next to it. And for those of you who under- know this, you might get it right away. And the tag was attempted murder. Oh, yeah. Because a group of crows mm-hmm. is a murder of crows. And hey. it's, it's actually really funny. It was me a joke about birds of prey. I'm like, when the fuck is this guy? I'm like, okay. I don't know if I'm seeing the one you're the seeing. The trailer, though? Oh, is the one where she's in the car upside down? Yeah. Yeah. There, again, there's four of them. Yeah. They're, I like, I think movies really need to work on their posters and like get some creative people to work on Boss them. Boss logic for are, Far From Home. Yeah. Like, listen, honestly, lately, a lot of them look all the same a bunch of marvel from like the dude the marvel had the same format with the guy with his arms like this yeah it was ragnarok and infinity no or was it was end game it was end game ragnarok and i think it was captain end marvel had was one. yeah so um both iron man and cap were looking one way oh no that was infinity war because yeah i don't know it was like this yeah it was ragnarok uh, infinity yeah. war and i think captain marvel all the exact same like yeah they looked it was perfectly Sorry. like balanced like yeah. there's a, like a bunch of characters like, and then amount honestly of aladdin had a similar poster to yeah. what had come out, and even same with like the, even the Star Wars ones, kind of. With the I like color the Joker palette. one, like the Joker ones, like they just all look, they just like just look, yeah, aesthetically pleasing. Yeah. See now the Marvel ones, I don't mind. Like it kind of makes sense. They wanted to keep a theme, but it looked different nonetheless. They just have, have like different people. people yeah. The Dark Knight one, when he's just like the building with the like burning yes. bat signal, is one of yeah. my favorite posters. That See, I nice. really like the Ragnarok one. That's this one down here. Mm-hmm. Because I, I like the symmetry of it, mm-hmm. whereas Infinity War does have the arms out deal. Yeah, but it's just Iron Man's arms out, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, Civil War was a good one. I liked Winter Soldiers. Spider Man's had good posters, like the Raimi trilogy. The yes. black, the black suit and the red suit. That yeah. was a good poster. Yeah, with the mirror image. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one was sweet. I also liked uh, Edward Norton's Hulk one. I thought that was cool, where the Hulk's behind him mm-hmm. and he's walking, like, and he's got a head. Like, yeah, that the was, shadow kind of thing. That yeah. was a good poster. Yeah, but all of them, the rest of them are pretty, like, they're fucking generic, right? Mm-hmm. Which is yeah. depressing because it's like, guys, you could do better. I'm just glad that like Sony but, like just pulled Boss Logic and just made, like they didn't do it. He didn't do any official like posters that they used, but he had like he did a three thousand one. I he? love you three thousand with like oh, the yeah, right. red gauntlet for an End Game. Mm-hmm. So like, he's yeah, it's just nice that they actually because they have fans that are very talented, mm-hmm. and it's like don't be like Nintendo and sue them and tell them to stop <laughs> doing what they're doing. Yeah, but be like you know other companies say okay, let's hire these people to do their shit. Yeah, no, but um, so the trailer you liked it? Just yeah, like I. Thought it was gonna suck ass, but I was like, okay, this isn't yeah. bad. I the title's it. stupid. Yeah, I liked it. The title's way too long. I didn't know what it is. <laughs> well, as far as they're concerned, it's called Birds of Prey, mm-hmm. is it not? Mm-hmm. And the extra bit, the emancipation, the emancipation of, of Harley Quinn, Harley Quinn is just a little ad- adverb kind of. Someone thing to said it. it should be it should be the other way around. The emancipation of Harley Quinn, special guest Birds of Prey, because they were not in that trailer at all. I I was hoping for. I loved. I love her Harley Quinn. I think she's so good. Mm-hmm. Mr. J. I wish they would have had more of the rest of them so we kind of... And I, you know what? I bet you they will. I think this is just the first one, the first official trailer, Yeah. and then the rest of it is going to be... And it wasn't supposed to be released either. It was supposed to only be seen in theaters, right? No, they released it afterwards. Ab- the they just said thing. for the first bit, it's mm-hmm. going to be first released only in theater, and then it'll come out. Well, up. they actually released a trailer in theaters. It was literally... So for I saw it in Chapter 2. This oh, is yeah. what it was. It was the Warner Brothers logo, and then a balloon came... And then she smashed the balloon saying, like, I hate clowns. Mm-hmm. And there was just kind of, that was it. Yeah. It wasn't actually a trailer. It was just like that was pretty much it. But yeah, yeah. it looks good. I don't think, like, I'm not, I'm not excited to see it. Who are the other, like, is Poison Ivy one of the people in it? I don't think so. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. Uh, I, don't know I didn't know that Ewan McGregor was in it. Oh, I knew that. Yeah. He needs to wear that mask. If he doesn't wear that mask. Who is he? Black Mask. Yeah. Oh, he's Black Mask. Yeah. Oh, yes, I knew that. Never mind. Where's I didn't his know mask? That. I didn't know he was going to be in this. Yeah, he needs to wear the mask. Yeah. See, this is why I don't like when they cast handsome people. No, just a lot of at movie stars because like, and, yeah. let's say if they would have cast Tom Cruise as Iron Man, mm-hmm. he would have wanted the mask off all the time. See, be like Todd, Tom, Tom Hardy. Man wears a mask yeah, all man. the time. Doesn't it's care. rare to see him without a mask. 
I don't even know what his face looks like. No, just joking. But no, um, yeah, I'm hoping that he's not like, oh, we're just going to call him Black Mask without the mask. Like, no. Well, what are they going to call him? Because they can't, they can't, can't call him Black Mask if he's a white guy in a white yeah. suit without a black mask. Yeah. yeah. No, if he's he Kylo like, Ren. He's Kylo Ren-ing it. He's like, they might be the hiding it to show it after I hope another so. trailer. Yeah. And I hope he has it for the majority of the movie. He's not going to. You don't think so, hey? No. <laughs> he's too handsome. I st- yeah, I don't know. Again, that's an issue, though, mm-hmm. because that's why like you try to get not nobodies, but people that are willing to be like, hey, you're going to be in a mask the whole time. Okay. But it also could be they could have wrote it that way because sure. it's not like all like, you don't have to blame the actors. Like I'm sure I'm not like defending you and no, McGregor, man, but I'm like, telling you a lot of these actors. are yeah, I know. Super like just stupid. They just need their faces like Vin Diesel and The Rock aren't in their contracts. They're not supposed to lose. It's like, come on. What kind of movie are we going to get? Like we one just because we know that in your contract that automatically means that like we know that you're gonna win all the time and <laughs> well, I mean no like really what do you expect well, I, I think you know movie? that from the beginning yeah it's not really like <laughs> it doesn't matter if it's in the contract one or not. day the Rock is gonna have like an Infinity War style movie where just the end goes horribly wrong and everything he just loses horribly everything's just yeah. I can't wait yeah I can't the wait. Rock's on SmackDown right now actually I guess is he yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm missing it whatever um what else we got you tell me. I don't think I have anything else. Star Wars is not letting their toys spoil the movies, so they're I guess they're hiding some. Yeah, Disney should just do that for everybody. They should. Have done that. Yeah, Giant it doesn't Man. make sense. Giant I think Man got honestly, leaked. apparently, that's been the first thing that actually spoils. It's not like leaks. In no, it's digital. toys. It's toys. Mm-hmm. How great was the fact that Mysterio like did the Iron Man thing where he came out of the grave? Like that freaked the hell yeah. out of me. I was like, that was not freaked the hell out of me, but I was like, that's a great addition. To I would have liked Uncle Ben. Mm, but they set it up no. so poorly. So but we don't work. know Uncle Ben. Yeah, that's the yeah. problem. We don't no, need we already to know, know Uncle Ben. We know Uncle Ben. We yeah, don't. But like, you could at least mention the man. You did. You know what? He got his little thing the with, BFP. The, with the BFP. Ooh, yeah. so listen, man. We've big known the freaking Uncle, peep, dude. We know Uncle Ben's gotten murdered wow. more times than twice. anybody. He's gotten murdered twice. And in the comics, Batman's parents, and in the cartoons, and Batman's parents have been murdered a bunch of times. Stop murdering people and just let the heroes live after the fact. We You've know what happens. It. Damn it, we don't need to see I it. I saw a pretty funny meme. It was like. Uh, Uncle Ben, when Sony and Marvel get back together, so he doesn't die again, and just like him wiping his head. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake! Yeah, but he's only died twice. So you know, what, guys, like, yeah, no, don't, don't play that. The high reason, door. obviously, the Iron Man thing made sense because he's been burdened by the idea of having to be Iron Man. Yeah, but, they can make a good uh, Marvel Zombies movie. Yeah, yeah. The thing, though, even though I, uh, I, know, I, we're back on Far From Home for a bit. Um, even though I, they rushed the relationship with him and Mary Jane, I thought it was super cute. The funniest thing, though, was uh, Ned and Betty. That was cute. Yeah, they broke that up. Reminded, <laughs> that reminded me of when um, the dinner, the, the 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 party in the office where Michael Scott and Jan uh-huh. were calling each other babe. Do you want to do that, babe? Okay, yeah, sure, babe. And it was super uncomfortable. That It reminded me of that so much. Wow. But that was super funny, though. The funniest thing, you guys want to do double date? Oh, we broke up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, it's, it's part of the journey. We both cherish the journey. And you know what's funny too? At the end of Endgame, we're all wondering like, what about the kids that lived on for five years? Yeah. They addressed that. Yeah, they showed the blip that they call mm-hmm. it, like, with the band calls back. Yeah, they apparently playing basketball at that time, so that was mm-hmm. lucky. Um, there was, you know, there was uh, they addressed quite a few things. It doesn't really add up because you can poke holes in the whole thing, but it's nice that they kind of added it. And John yeah. Watts, man, the only shit. thing I, the only thing I will poke a hole is the fact that this kid in their age group. That technically is five years older now. Why is he still in their class? Because of his age, he's still. No, I thought he wasn't in their class prior to. He got into that class. Is that what it was? I thought he was in their grade. No, when he blipped, when he he was five years. That was his brother. He grew. He and now he's or someone's brother, and now he's that age in that grade. So say if you were five years older than me, and you I came back. You came back after five years. I would have been in your grade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The funniest thing. Okay, I totally missed that on the plane. He's a classic MJ. And it's just so cringy. Yeah. Just so, like who's imagine if someone come up to you like classic Vasili. It's like, shut the hell up. Yeah. Shut up. Get out of my face. Don't say that. <laughs> no, it was it was they did such a good job with this one. And Tom Holland was way better in this one than he was in like he was good in homecoming. Really good. Yeah. Um, mostly good towards the end. Obviously in, in uh, Infinity War and Endgame. Endgame he was just like a little bit, but Infinity War he was really good in it too. But this one, man, oh dude. And like those moments with happy, I teared up. When he's making it, does the hand thing. Mm-hmm. The one great. thing I dislike, the only thing I dislike that can like come to mind is that they never went off the cliffhanger of Aunt May finding out his identity. Yeah. Yeah, but they, 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 they kind of set it up where it's kind of like, oh, I can't wait to see how she reacts. that was homecoming. 
Yeah. Yes. That's what I meant. So that should have been addressed in Infinity, maybe? No, because... Well, it's what makes sense to address yeah, in Infinity War. War. No, no, they did, because guess what? He's showing up, she knows he's Spider-Man, and they're doing these But it's kind of like for this next cliffhanger, for the next movie, it's just like, yeah, I fixed it. Let's just go on. It's kind of like, uh, I would like... It didn't ruin the movie, but I would just like... I would have liked I, I to feel have seen the, it. The I would have felt it was unnecessary. Yeah, because like, it, it was a good cliffhanger, I agree, but it, it, can't, it would have had to have been addressed in Infinity. That's it. Like right because after. Because you have Infinity and Endgame. Five years passed. He blipped away as May, I assume she... She did. She, she did. ghosted yeah. out. Originally, she, she didn't, She came though. back into her apartment, and the lady thought that his her husband was cheating on Originally, her. she wasn't. I remember yeah. the Russo brothers said during Infinity War, she survived. But and I, I don't know. See, that I was excited be. for that, too, to see, like... Because that would have been good to see, like, her actually be emotional about losing Peter. Yeah. I don't think we need that. I don't, well, think, I don't think we need Aunt May. You know, actually, it would have been funny... Is she's if they hot. use oh that to age her, and so she's the the regular Aunt May look. So she ends up having gray hair, and she's an old no, lady. No, just replace her with Sam Raimi's Aunt May. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yikes! Or like just an older version. So it's like everyone was complaining that she looks too young, or not oh. complaining really, but they're like, oh, she's like she's getting no younger complaining every year. Yeah. And so that 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 blip ended up aging her to the age that she is in the comics. Yeah. Um, I think that's it. What else we got? Nothing. Mm. All right. That was another week. We covered a lot. Mm. Another week, another dollar. Another, I need a dollar, dollar. Okay, that's it. That's all. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being on the show again. Oh my God, thank you so much for having me. I feel so blessed. I hope everyone has a You know really we're good not weekend. guests, right? What's that? <laughs> we're not guests, right? right. Um, I really hope everyone has a really good weekend whenever you're listening to this. Well, it's a weekday. I guess, no, it's a weekend when it comes out. But like. if they li- Whenever they <laughs> listen to this, come on. <laughs> you can follow me on Twitter at the F words G. You can email us at the F word podcast at gmail.com. Make sure you're putting those reviews if you find them. You can email us there. We'd love to read them on there just like Arturo did. And um, we're going to be releasing, as I said, a Joker spoiler review probably on Monday night. As soon as it's done rendering, I'll probably just release it and get it done and over with so you guys can listen to it or Tuesday. Who knows? And by who knows, I mean I know. Next week, again, no regular episode. I'll be doing my deep dive with Robert, uh, Life and Hip Hop. And uh, yeah, you can follow the Lazy Canadian on Instagram. You can follow the Effort Podcast on Instagram and on Facebook. And uh, wherever you listen to from Stitcher, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and all those places in between, if you do like what you're listening to, um, you know, just that, just the fact that you're listening to it means the world to us. But if you do want to add a little bit of spice into that latte, just pop in uh, a review or a comment or a like or something like that. That would be very much appreciated. Or you can even email us your thoughts to the effort podcast at gmail.com. I think that's it. It's your boy, the meme machine, the drama queen, Anthony. It's Bass. You really got to work on your outro, Bass. You know what? I don't need to do as extra. It seems, like, it seems like you just like... That's not actually like it's not your real name, but it's a shortened version Thanks. of your name. Yeah, I know it's not my real name. <laughs> but like you just begrudgingly are just like it's Vass. Uh, oh. Well, I'm coming in there and I'm G. No? Too much? Okay, that's too much. Okay. We're out. There's been a lot of awkward stare stares between me and Vasily today. I on said your we're out. <laughs>